What's up? Today I'm going to be going over the multiple career paths that you can have in civil structural engineering. I'll be going over the type of work that those career paths go into and the pros and cons of each. Hi, I'm Matt Picardle and I'm a licensed civil engineer practicing in structural engineering in the US. But first, a disclaimer. This is based on my current experience in the industry. This is from talking to people and doing my own research. If you really want to learn about these career paths and go more in depth, go do your own research or go find someone on LinkedIn that has a position that you want and go talk to them about that position. Don't listen to some random guy on YouTube. I got this idea topic from Stephanie Slocum and Alex Colkenna's blogs about career paths in civil structural engineering. So I'll link those below if you want to get their perspective as well. Let's jump into it. The most popular or most typical career path in civil structural engineering is getting into the private consulting design industry. This is what most students think of when they want to get into structural engineering. They want to design buildings and make them stand up. So in private consulting structural engineering design firms, you can get into small, medium, or large firms. I typically tend to recommend small or medium sized firms. That way you can get to learn a lot of everything because they don't have too many employees. You'll end up doing a lot of the design work, a lot of the communication with the clients, and you get to see the whole design process from beginning to end. It's a lot tougher to get pigeonholed in a smaller firm like that. And I've been in that medium, smaller firm type of environment uh, pretty much most of my structural engineering career. That's where I thrive the most in and this is where most of my experience comes in. So I can speak a lot about this, but all these other career paths that I'm gonna go into, these are from talking to different types of people. And a general con for the private industry, they tend to get paid less than let's say government work or maybe some of these other career paths that we're gonna go over. Another con is that since it's a deadline based industry, you may have to work some overtime as well. And overtime definitely varies between what firm you're in and what type of sector or industry that your firm works in. These next three career paths are more of the specialties or things that you can pursue in the private industry. So I'm gonna go briefly over them so you can get to know the career paths within the career paths in the private consulting industry is. In private consulting, you can specialize in forensics engineering. This is where you basically figure out what happened to a building that's collapsing or that has collapsed, or maybe a building has a steel member that's failing and they want you to do the forensic investigation on what caused it, what's happening. This is a specialty in structural engineering. From what I heard, that's a very interesting career path, especially if you want to get into that existing building structures and do that type of reverse forensic engineering. Another career path that private consulting firms may offer are a Revit structural engineering specialist. If you're really into Revit and all the 3D and BIM softwares and you like working with those, but you like engineering as well, there are positions that combine both of those. And the last subcategory in the private consulting firms are working for an AE firm, an architectural engineering firm. These firms are usually bigger. They combine the architect and the engineer to design the whole structure. I haven't personally worked in one, but from what I hear, some engineers like it because they get to work on really cool projects with the architect and it's a lot easier to communicate with them. But I've also heard that a con is that you are working under the architect and you may just be treated like an in-house subconsultant. All right, let's get into the next career path, which is bridge engineering. Yes, buildings and bridges, those are two different design industries. You're probably only going to work on buildings or you're probably only going to work on bridges. And those industries, from my knowledge, they're pretty different. In the bridge industry, I know there's private firms that you can work for that specialize in bridge design, but there's also government positions. At least in California, it's Caltrans. Bridges aren't my specialty, but I know in California, you get to do a lot of post-tension bridges, but the type of bridges that you get to work on do vary from state to state and region to region. The next career path is going into government work. In the US, in California, this usually means going working for the city as a building department engineer where you get to do a lot of the plan checks. You get to check and review the structural engineering drawings that are coming in to your city and you're making sure the structural engineer that's designing that building meets all of the city codes and whatnot. If you end up as a building plan checker and working for the government, there are a lot of benefits, literally benefits from the city. Compared to private, no question, better benefits and higher pay. And you probably also get lower hours. You probably don't have to work that much overtime. And there's most likely going to be less stress. I personally know engineers that after working in the private consulting industry, they would get burnt out. So they would shift uh, career paths into the government work where it is a lot less stressful, but they still get to use their structural engineering skills that they've learned throughout their years. Uh, the biggest con for me working for the city or this type of work is I really like design work and reviewing plans isn't the most interesting part of 
that position for me. I also know of government positions where they do actually get to work on the structural design of structures. Typically it's not buildings, but specialty structures, such as maybe a water treatment plant or an infrastructure project that the city itself is designing and they have their own engineers to design it. So it's not all plan checking, but it's up to you and what you need right now in your career. The next career path that's related to the government is working as a military engineer. I don't have personal experience in this, but Alex Kolkenna, who's worked as a military engineer, made a great blog post about it. So I encourage you to go check it out. I linked it in the description below. My summary of it is that you get a lot of military benefits from being in the military. You have benefits for finding a job and paying for your education. And you get the prestige and the reputation of being in the military as an engineer. If you work for the military and you were an engineer, you're a badass. All right, let's jump into the less conventional career paths that maybe aren't so common, especially if you're a student, but you should know that they're out there. So just in case you can't get into these other career paths, you have all these other career paths that you can get into. I'm gonna categorize the next one as specialty structural engineering firms. These are the structural engineers that specialize basically in designing and engineering a specific structure. For example, this might be a steel truss manufacturer that manufactures the truss, but they also have their own structural engineers that engineer those trusses. Those structural engineers, all they do are those trusses all day, every day, and they're really good and really efficient at it. Other examples include the telecom industry where they make those telecom towers. That's all they do. The work may not be as great, but I hear it does does pay uh, a good amount than the typical private industry. You can have specialty structural engineers for glass panels, for uh, PV solar panels, steel stairs, wood trusses, cross laminated timber, shoring and retaining wall structures. There's a lot of them out there. The next one is working for a construction firm. Yes, construction firms sometimes hire their own structural engineers. Basically, they're out in the field. So if you like getting going out into the field, this might be a good career path for you. And it generally pays more than the private industry. You'll be helping the contractor out with their construction issues. Can we put a giant crane at this location? Can we lift this giant concrete slab without cracking it? How are we going to attach this man lift to this existing structure? You don't get to design the whole new structure, but you still get to use your structural engineering skills in a practical way out in the field. The next one is being in academia. This involves being a professor or a researcher at a university. This field probably isn't the most profitable. You need to get your PhD and it probably doesn't uh, pay as well because you're a teacher, but you don't go into that profession wanting to gain a lot of money. You wanna teach, you wanna do research, uh, you're super interested in the projects that you're working on. You want to publish papers. You want to share your knowledge. That's how your professors became professors. So if that's what you love and you really want to get into it, go talk to your professor. They're the ones that know better than me. The next career path is working for a large manufacturer. Two companies that come to mind are Hilti and Simpson Strong Tie. A lot of their positions vary from sales engineers to being researchers that test their products to software engineers that help them on their new softwares. What's cool about those positions is that you get to use your structural engineering knowledge to help other structural engineers. And the next one that I kind of mentioned already is going into software or coding. There's a lot of software, obviously, for structural engineering and a lot of those software firms hire structural engineers that have a background in coding or vice versa as well. So if you're really interested in coding, but you still want to do structural engineering, consider this career path. It's easy to find them, ask your structural engineers what software they use or open up your structural engineering magazine and look at all the software ads that are on there or go to a career fair or a convention. A lot of these vendors, software companies are there that where you can directly talk to them. And last but not least is starting your own firm or being a freelance structural engineer. If you do it right, this is probably the most profitable. You start your own business. That's where you make the most amount of money as a business owner, but there's a high chance of failure, high risk, high reward, but please don't be one of those freelancers that charges 99 cents for a structural design. That just brings the whole industry down. You went to school for four plus years. You're good at what you do. Don't be the 99 cent store of the structural engineering industry. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and I will see you next time.